The Coast Artillery Corps, in conjunction with the Air Corps and the Navy, endeavors to defeat hostile naval attacks against harbor defenses, naval bases, cities, and other important areas. It also protects our fleet or any of its detachments while at, moving to, or leaving its bases. In beach defense, it supports the infantry and other arms with mobile seacoast artillery. This film explains position finding systems. That is the methods we use to accurately locate naval targets. Seacoast artillery weapons range all the way from three inch rapid fire guns and 155 millimeter guns to guns and mortars mounted on railway carriages. In addition to various calibers and types of fixed seacoast guns and mortars. Detail, post. Report. Gun arm in order. B1 in order. B2 in order. Set forward rule in order. Angular travel board in order. Range correction board in order. Percentage corrector in order. Deflection board in order. Sir, range section in order. At ease. Every plotting room is laid out to conform with conditions at its own installation. The equipment may differ somewhat in its individual design, but the components are always the same, and the essentials are all here. Now let's take a look at a diagram showing a typical battery installation. As shown on this diagram, the positions of the various elements are drawn compactly to include them all. Here we have the battery commander station so located as to give him the best possible view of the field of fire. The positions of the guns. The observation stations B1 and B2, generally located as far apart as one quarter to one third of the maximum range of the battery. The plotting room. And very important, the communication system, a telephone net. The battery commander has lines to every element of the installation. The observation stations must be so located as to afford the observers a clear view of the field of fire. The station is equipped with an instrument having a telescope and an azimuth scale for measuring azimuths. Observations must be accurate to one one hundredth of a degree. And the data obtained by the observer transmitted to the plotting room rapidly and without error. In the plotting room, it is the function of the plotting room detail to convert the data received from the observation stations into data that can be set on the guns. One small mistake anywhere may be greatly magnified in the final calculations, and such mistakes are usually reflected in the data for several shots. Roughly, we know about where the target is because we can see it. But we don't know exactly where it is. Yet to point the guns properly, we must know the location of the target in terms of its distance or range and its direction or azimuth as measured from the battery. The determination of these two factors of data is the function of a position finding system. The first step is to locate the target in relation to the base end stations. Broadly speaking, the calculations are based upon the mathematical principles of triangulation. Our endeavor will be to form a triangle, the three points of which will be the base end stations as two of the points and the target as the third or apex point. This device is the 110 degree plotting board, designed for use with fixed artillery. It is a graphic representation of the battery field of fire 
and is built accurately to scale. In this case, 400 yards to one inch. These arms, called the station arms, are pivoted at points representing each observation station. The third, or gun arm, is pivoted at the selected directing point of the battery. The pivot points of all three arms are in exact relation to the physical location of the two stations and the battery directing point. We will now illustrate plotting the position of the target on the plotting board. The B1 arm setter receives the azimuth reading of the target from the reader in the B1 station. Operates the B1 station arm, setting it so that the index box is on that azimuth. The B2 arm setter similarly receives and sets the azimuth from the B2 station. The plotter marks the point of intersection of the lines of sight with his targ, which leaves a tiny pinprick on the sheet of plotting paper. The point of intersection is, of course, comparable to the apex of the triangle in our illustration and marks the actual position of the target. The gun arm is then laid on that point by the gun arm operator. And where the gun arm falls on the azimuth circle is the azimuth of the target from the battery directing point. The gun arm is graduated for range to the same scale as the plotting board. And so the range from the battery directing point to the target is obtained. In a battery of this type, there are two 14-inch guns on disappearing carriages designed to fire 1,400-pound projectiles at elevations up to 20 degrees and ranges up to 23,000 yards. The other gun is about 120 yards to our right. Notice the snap and precision with which these men work. There is nothing hit or miss about the firing of Seacoast guns. Maximum efficiency must be maintained throughout the entire battery installation. The guns must be carefully laid, otherwise every other man's effort to obtain accuracy is wasted. In short, perfect teamwork, timing, coordination and accuracy are required of a coast artillery firing battery. They'll be firing this gun in a few seconds. Let's pause a moment and watch it in action. Here goes the shell. The time of flight at this range is about 30 seconds. Since this is only practice, the target is that tent-like object out there in tow of the tug. It's about 20,000 yards from the guns. Watch for the splash, and it's close. Now keep watching. Both guns are fired. And the second splash is over, but close. We have now demonstrated the principles of position finding, namely the process of determining the range and direction from the battery to the expected position of the target at the instant of impact by the projectile.